Good morning and welcome to another Daily Five. Um, this morning, just like you guys, I read Psalm 16. Now, before we dive into that, just a huge thank you for all of those emails. Um, I loved reading how some of you guys were interacting with our psalm from yesterday. Uh, Manny said uh, that God will always find a way for you. Love that, Manny. Um, Caden was talking about God is present and we can cast our fears on him. Going back to that verse written by Peter. I was encouraged by that. Ava, uh, you are, I know that God is in control even when it feels uh, different. And, and thank you for writing that as, as well. Keep on um, interacting. This is our format for this week. Um, it's devotional. It's, it's not school work but we did say if you follow through with all these uh, daily fives we'll be sure to find uh, some way to get you some bonus credit for that and then we'll dive in uh, probably starting on Tuesday of next week with our our first week of online um, but today we're talking about Psalm uh, 16 probably one of my favorite Psalms when I read Psalm 16 I always have to think of a story of Corey Corey Ten Boom uh, Corey grew up in Holland um, she experienced World War II together with her father and her sister Betsy and they felt called by God uh, to uh, save and uh, to house, to hide uh, Jews um, as the Germans were trying to hunt them, them down. Um, and Corey and Betsy and her father were eventually, towards the end of World War II, they were uh, ratted out by one of their neighbors. Um, they were arrested. Her father died several days later in prison. And Corey and Betsy ended up uh, being shipped to one of the worst German concentration camps for women, uh, the concentration camp Robinsbrook. Um, while they were there, they were able to smuggle in, it was a total miracle, a small pocket Bible. And as they were being led to their barracks, the place that they were housed, uh, Corey became very discouraged because she saw, even though the camp as a whole was just terrible, that she was being led together with her sister Betsy and several other women uh, to the worst barrack, the most disgusting place to live. And the guards were terrible, the conditions were absolutely horrendous, but this barrack, this house in particular, uh, was just the worst. And it was because there were fleas. Not in just some pockets of the house, no, there were fleas everywhere. And she turned to Betsy and said, how can I be thankful for anything while living in this terrible place? And Betsy said, we can be thankful for everything in all circumstances because God is still good. But Corey didn't understand that then, but a couple months later she did. She suddenly realized that because they were in the worst barrack with the most amount of fleas, that the German guards never came there. And she was able to have Bible studies and sing songs and be an encouragement to the women there because the German guards never showed up because of the fleas. And again, she turned to Betsy and said, Betsy, you are right. We can be thankful in all circumstances, even if we might not understand it right there. Now that attitude of gratitude is the same attitude that we find in Psalm 16 written by David. We don't know what the problem was that David was facing, but we do know that he saw two paths uh, that he could follow, two types of responses. And, and the first one is a path of trusting in other things, and he describes that in verse 4. He says, The sorrow of those who run after another God shall multiply, their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. David says, in the face of a challenge, of struggle, of difficulty, we have the opportunity to go after other things, other things that make us uh, feel better uh, when life is challenging. But David also points out that that path does not end well. Now, there is an alternative. And the rest of the psalm, besides verse 4, is all about that path. And David calls that the path of life. Now, to follow that path, we need to take three uh, concrete, um, deliberate steps. The first one is in verse 5. We need to choose God over other things. Let's uh, read verse 5 together. It says, The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. So if I choose God as number one, then I'm also realizing the tremendously encouraging truth that God holds my lot. Just a fancy way of saying that whatever happens in my life, that I know that God is in control in the big and scary and in the small and seemingly meaningless. Uh, God is in control of all of that. And when life feels out of control, as it often does in these times, um, that is a super encouraging truth. 
Let's go to the a next one. And that's in verse 8. We first we choose God. The next one is we actively follow God wherever he may lead. He says in verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Just like yesterday, we see another word picture where things in life are being shaken. There's craziness all around us. But David says that when he sets the Lord before him, and he allows all of his choices to follow with what God wants, in the middle of that storm where everything is shaking, that he is steady and peaceful and secure because of he is following God. So choosing God, following God, all part of this path of life. The last one is rejoicing in God. Just like Corey, in a difficult circumstance, we are called to find joy in God. That is in verse 9. Let's read along with me. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices, and my flesh also dwells secure. So when we choose joy, we make that active choice to move from sadness, maybe a little depression, right? Or uh, being frustrated with our situation. When we move to joy, um, God says that we will dwell securely. And again, that is probably talking not just about the circumstances, but also about our hearts. We can dwell securely when we know that God is in control and we're choosing joy. Now, following God, choosing God, rejoicing in God, they all lead to something. It's like every path leads to something. We find what it leads to in verse 11. David writes, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. If I've interacted with many of you, I think we've kind of I hit the top of the curve. We're excited for an extra week of break, uh, but now we're realizing life is not as fun as it was, right? So we're missing out on our friends. Uh, we are uh, not able to do a whole lot. Maybe many of you are bored, but if we follow this path of life, God promises there are pleasures forevermore. Now, those might be the pleasures that we consciously enjoy in the moment, but they are definitely the pleasures of living a life that is close to God and in line with His, His will. Now, let's go back to that story that we started off with. Corey was eventually miraculously released from the concentration camp Ravensbrück. Um, her sister Betsy uh, did, did die there. But Corey traveled all over the world sharing about her experiences and how God showed up in big ways in these really difficult seasons of her life. And Cora Timbone, uh, as she was thinking about her life and how she had to prioritize to choose to follow God with joy, just like we're challenged to do in Psalm 16, uh, Corey wrote this. She said, I've held many things in my hands and I have lost them all. But whatever I place in God's hands, that I still possess. So there's many things that I hang on to tightly that I really, really want. And if I hang on to those, there's a chance that I will lose them and there's definitely not a lot of joy there. But if I give them over to God and say, for my school, for my sport, for my family, I just want your will to be done. Um, I want to choose to follow you. And that is where there is joy. And it might be joy that looks different than we would expect, but it is joy nonetheless. Before we dive into steps four and five of our daily five, I want to encourage you to listen to this next song. And I look forward to meeting you again tomorrow. So oh. 
no peace beside you, God. And I find my shelter in you, Jesus. My So open my eyes now to see